Hey, I'm Daniel Britton, and I'm a staff writer with TheMovieBuff.net, and you have found our YouTube channel for The Movie Buff Show, where we do interviews and podcasts. For this conversation, I was able to speak with voice actors Misty Lee and Antonio Raul Corbo for their work in the new animated film Pupel of Chimney Town, which just recently premiered as part of the Animation is Film Festival in Los Angeles. In the film, Misty Lee plays the role of Lola, the mother of the, of the young Lubichi. And Antonio plays the role of Luigi, who lives under the black smoke of Chimney Town, wanting just to see the stars, which his father Bruno has, al- has always talked about. On one Halloween night, he meets the character of Pupel, uh, a man quite literally made of garbage. And together, they go on a journey trying to see the stars. Now, interestingly, this is a film that is originally in Japanese, but Misty and Antonio were able to provide their voices for the English version of the film. So we talk about that. So we talk a bit about that process and how that's done, uh, doing the English version of the film, uh, and we talk about a bunch of other stuff. So we spend a bit of time at the beginning of the interview talking about some of their background stuff, some interesting things I saw from their filmography, and we do, of course, get to Pupel of Chimney Town and ask some fun questions about that and their experience on that working on that film. So let's get right into the conversation with Misty and Antonio. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> it's nice to meet you both. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're getting right into it. So I'd love to start with some background questions before I get into uh, Poopel of Chimney Town. And sorry if I sound like a frog. I'm a bit sick right now. So no, you we'll, sound good. We'll get it's fine. It. You have a very pleasant sounding voice. I'll blame it on the sickness then. <laughs> I mean, or just take the compliment. Yeah, no, thank you. Because <laughs> it sounds good to me. Okay. I don't know what you sound like without a frog in your throat, but the frog suits you, so. Okay, good. So I'd love to start with just asking, Misty, I was looking at your filmography. I saw that you have over 100 voice credits. So what got you into voice acting? You know, I started out, when I first moved to LA, you kind of try everything and see what sticks, right? You sort of throw spaghetti at the wall. And I was doing magic already when I moved out here and someone came and saw one of my magic shows and said, you need to take improv because you don't quite know who you are on stage. You're going from this sexy illusionist to this folksy chick with cheese. And and it's hard to kind of wrap our mind around. And so I started taking improv. And when I took improv, somebody said, you know, you do a lot of fun characters. Have you ever considered getting into voices? And my husband is an animation guy. It's like what he does. And he's very well known for the animated series and co-creating Harley Quinn. And um, he said to me, I was talking to him and Mark Evanier, who's a good friend of ours. So it's nice to know somebody, right? And I said, I, I, I'm thinking about getting into this. And they both said, we might be able to get you an audition, but we cannot get you a job start taking classes and make sure this is what you want to do. And so I started taking classes and making sure that's what I wanted to do. And about a year later, I was Taft Hartley and in the union and the career began. So it was like a slow climb from improv to, wow, I don't have to hook up a trailer and juggle six people's schedules. This is kind of convenient and awesome. I could just go and act and that's going to be enough and people will pay me. And it's like, well, I mean, if you suit the project, they will. And so here we are. Oh, that's awesome. And the, 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 I, also noticed, I also noticed you wrote two Scooby-Doo films. So did that opportunity kind of allow that to happen? Yeah, the Abracadabra Do and then the story credit, I think, is what you're talking about. And yes. Spike and Tony said, we want to do a Scooby-Doo with magic and we kind of feel like you'd be a good person to use as a resource. And so we helped them come up with the characters and stuff for that. And it was actually uh, the lead character on that was based on a magician I was working with at the time who is a world famous illusionist named Jonathan Pendragon. It's not directly based on Jonathan, but some of the, the proclivities and the and the mannerisms and things and, and the, the look was uh, based on Jonathan's old looks. Oh, that's that's so cool. Awesome. Yeah, behind now, the scenes. I, yeah. Now, Antonio, I'd love to ask you just, I know you played Nicolage uh, on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So I'd love to ask if you prefer, if you prefer doing the live action acting or voice acting. That, that's really hard because they're, they're both very good. Um, I think there's, there's their pros and cons, uh, obviously, but I think I kind of just a bit like voice acting just a bit better because I feel like I can, can be more of myself and more crazy and I don't have to worry about uh, camera guys looking at me and like being like, what is that guy doing? What, why is he why is he doing that? <laughs> um, so, but I think the only downside of voiceover is at least for me when I'm in the booth it kind of gets a bit lonely because no no one else is in there. <laughs> um, sure. That's that's kind of the only thing. But I really love how how crazy and cool I can be 
and I've always loved animation since I was like a little kid. I was watching like Scooby Doo and SpongeBob, and then I was watching regular show. Um, my mom didn't want me to, but I still did. <laughs> and I'm almost positive I have that that Scooby Doo DVD somewhere. I have a copy of it. Yeah, I'm almost positive I have that. I have a copy of it. If you don't, I can send it to you. It's somewhere. It's somewhere here because I, I know I, I have. It. <laughs> it's like you guys are meant to work together. I love him. I love him so much from the moment I was just telling somebody from the moment I laid eyes on him, I was like, I love and want to protect that man. <laughs> Did you guys get to interact a lot on set? No. no. We didn't meet until Friday. That was the first time we ever met. On the red carpet was the first time. And we were like instant buddies. Yep. Oh, At least that's my take on it. You might think I'm a jerk off camera, no, but no, I think no, you're no. awesome. We were dancing around and stuff. I was having a lot of fun. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, and we like... were both really nervous because neither one of us had ever been on a red carpet before. So we kind of like linked arms and skipped on to the Wicked Witch to get with a wizard rather, you know, together. Oh, found your people. Oh, I love him. And his whole family's awesome. I met his uncle and his mom and they're just, they're amazing human beings who are raising a great human being. Thank and you. It's, it's so good. He's so, he's so talented and he's just an awesome dude. Oh, that's so cool. Now, uh, also, Antonio, I was looking at your filmography, and I saw that you were also uh, a loop group on It Chapter 2. Is there a story behind that? Oh, so, yeah. Um, I, I don't know the exact, my mom definitely does, but I just remember vividly, because I'm pretty sure this was probably like two years ago, so a year ago, something like that. But I remember my mom's like, hey, you got an audition for, like, the super secret thing. We need you to, like, a match a voice. And I'm like, all right, sure, I'll do it. And um, I did it. It was cool. Apparently they liked me enough to hire me. So that that's cool. Um, and then I went in, um, I, they told me it was uh, It Chapter Two and that um, Jack Dylan Grazer's voice, who was the original kid, um, his voice got deeper because of puberty. And for some reason I, I sounded exactly like him, which is cool. And uh, I just needed to dub over the whole entire film. So I dubbed <sighs> over the whole and all of his lines. Wow. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Does he know? Okay. Like, have you met him? Um, no, I haven't met him, but I'm actually a big fan of him. My uncle was watching one of his live streams, and he was like, "I don't know if you noticed, but in it chapter two, it's not my voice; it's um a voice actor's voice." So props to him. And I'm like, "Oh my god, he knows I did it." He does know, and you did a great job. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's amazing trivia. Now now I really know why your voice is so familiar. <laughs> I'm a big It Chapter Two fan. Oh really? I'm yeah. I'm a big I like I like horror movies. I like it. I like I like all that stuff. Cool. Now getting into Pupel, um, I just wanted to ask. I know it's the English version of a Japanese film. So mm -hmm. do you guys watch the Japanese version first, or I'm just curious if you have to kind of imitate their performance or get to make it your own? Both. Do you want to yeah. take this one, Antonio? Because you did um, film much of it. I'll, I'll do half and I'll, I'll give the rest to you. <laughs> okay. Um, what happened with me, at least, is they gave me the description of Lubici, um, some images uh, um, of just the movie in general. They also sent me the link of the original movie um, in Japanese. And I watched it and it was it was beautiful. It was amazing. Uh, half the time I didn't even read the subtitles because I just I felt the emotion coming through. And so, yes, we, we did watch it. Uh, at least I did. And after that, actually, um, I went in. But I think... I, I don't know if I would necessarily say I based, I like copied it like word for word or tone for tone. I think I, I based it off of it. So I would do like one take that's similar to it. And then I would kind of branch off and do my own thing. And if, the, if they wanted the one that sounded more similar to the original one, they could use that one. Or if they wanted the one where I was more crazy and doing my weird stuff that I do with my voice, then they can use that one too. You're so awesome. Thank you. <laughs> he's just awesome i love making him i love making him tumble and blush he's just amazing so for me it was a little bit different um i watched it as we went along so they would play a scene and then i would dub over it and so i i had no idea where the movie was going and I, I was just talking to someone about this. I said, I considered it a privilege to be feeling that stuff in real time because Lola has a lot of emotional heavy lifting and she loves this kid who's a dreamer and she's lost her husband and there's a lot of unknowns and it's not easy for her. So to come in, it was really, really heavy and to get to experience the, uh, the emotional tonage in the shift in tone, I don't wanna to give too much away and give you a ton of spoilers if you haven't seen the film or if your readers haven't, um, 
but I got to see and feel all that in real time. And they were not stuck to the Japanese version at all, other than we had to do the technical lip flap matching. And we were in great hands with Jeff and Jamie, our director, Jamie Simone, knows exactly what he's doing. And he really made sure that all of those performances would braid together. He's just brilliant. And Jeff had a vision, a very clear vision. Jeff is the uh, executive. He's one of the producers on the movie. Uh, a very clear vision of where he wanted this to go. And I think that their, their collaboration helped us collaborate as a team. And it was like magic in the pot. Sounds like such a neat process. Oh, it, it so is. It's really hard to do because you've got all this technical stuff and then they play you like, this is what the Japanese sounded like. So you kind of have this much time to say or do whatever you're going to do, right? Okay. And then they play it back and they look at it and does it match the lip flaps because the animation was done to the Japanese track. So there's like this huge technical aspect to it. But it's so, the movie is so good and it's so beautiful. Ah, uh, cool. No. Yeah. When you guys saw the film on the on the the premiere, was that your voices or was that the Japanese version? Ours. It was ours, and I was very excited to watch it. And my family cried, and I cried a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. I think Stephen probably did too. He was sitting yeah. next to Stephen Root. Yeah. <gasps> okay. Yeah, yeah, it's very moving at times. So that's great. Yeah, right. It's beautiful. Yeah. I feel like it's such an interesting thing, especially with like with any film, but especially with voice acting, how you're only doing your part, your voice acting, no idea the scope of the final product. So what were, what were some of your favorite scenes? How were you guys feeling when you were watching the film for the first time? I know my favorite scene. What's your favorite scene? Do you want to go first? Or... No, you go first. Oh, okay. So um, I actually have a picture. I'm pr I don't know if it's a picture or a painting, but it looks amazing of the scene where I'm, I don't want to spoil anything, but we're in a mine uh, with Poupel, and it's when I first meet him and stuff, and I'm giving him the name, and we're becoming friends and stuff like that, but it was such a touching scene, and such a moving scene, that I, I have the picture of it now, and it, it's, the artwork is so beautiful, I mean, all the, the shimmering lights of the crystals, and, but like matched with the dark tones of the cave, and then just the emotion that you feel with Lubichi making his first friend with someone, being Pupel, and that that just being a very pivotal point in the story. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Misty, what about you? I there are so many moments in this movie that I just absolutely love, um, and mine is a spoiler moment. So I don't know how much I can tell you, but there is a scene where for the first, have you seen the movie already? Yes. But there is a moment where Pupel reveals that he has had Lubici's bracelet the whole time. And it is incredibly emotional and moving. It's really, really lovely. And the other thing that really got me was Bruno's outro. Steven Root's voiceover as the narrator of this movie is so warm and so connected and so utterly heartbreaking. And it's absolutely gorgeous work. So those two, that visual of Lubici looking up, and and then there's another moment later where Lubici looks up and and Pupel looks looks up at Lubici and Lubici looks down at him. Again, I don't want to give you a ton of spoilers, but there's just there's this really heartfelt moment where Pupel shows for the first time some humanity and he starts to cry. And uh, but also something you can actually use uh, is Stephen's voiceover work as the narrator, especially in his last kind of summary, his last, his final speech is just magnificent. I'm such a fan of everybody in this. This is one of those jobs where I personally looked at it and said, what the hell am I doing here? Like, I'm <laughs> like all these other people are like on TV and they're all pretty famous. And I'm just like this rando that was stuck in, like, I'm so happy to be here. It's ridiculous. Oh, that's awesome. I have imposter syndrome too, but you're right? definitely right? Like in the right spot. <laughs> oh, well, I'm very happy to be here for sure. I'm always grateful for the work, you know, but this one in particular, I'm like, oh, this movie's awesome. What am I doing in it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. Now, I think my last one would be just um, from all the great themes, I'd love to hear what you guys took away from the film and what you hope audiences will take away from the film. You want to go first? Oh, oh, okay. I was waiting for you. <laughs> um, I think 
there's a lot of there's definitely a lot of elements. I mean, there's friendship. There's the whole father son aspect. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the dream aspect. But I think I think one of my favorite ones is probably the friend one, um, the friend aspect with um with Antonio, not me, Antonio, but the character Antonio played by Tristan, an amazing guy. I met him. Um, giving me fist bumps and saying I was awesome. He's a really cool kid. But just how time. how it was like this weird sort of anti-friendship where they want to be friends but like they have they have different opinions and they don't want to like admit one's wrong and one's right they kind of both realize to accept each other and that no matter what they're gonna be friends and just the call out to saying lubici antonio and then knowing that they're they're friends again that was just an amazing part and i cried and we looked at each other and we're like we did it (laughs) so i i love that scene and i love that part it's my favorite thing of the movie and my also another favorite thing of the movie is the contrast of voice. I haven't said about that. Just the sweet, loving, motherly tones from Lola, and then the anxiety-filled Lubici with the robotic Pupel, and then the the narrator dad, the sweet, gruff warm, warm yeah. the, the the all that from Bruno. It's just and, and it all combines and it it makes this like collage of awesomeness that you wouldn't really expect from all these different voices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could have been a lot of noise, right? Yeah. But that's that's what I meant about like the alchemy of how they just pulled all of these different people because Antonio was just saying a minute ago that we all kind of booked this off of our demos, like off of our animation demos. We didn't try out for this movie. We just lucked into it and we were just chosen. And the fact that the team, the creative team was able to grab these voices that sound nothing alike and don't really feel like they would go together but have this vision that braids them all together and makes this beautiful project. It is, it is diverse. It is fantastic. It's really interesting. And one of the other things I wanted to say that about Ant- Antonio, about what you talked about, about um, Lubici and Antonio's friendship is one of the things that Lubici does is by being brave, he inspires Antonio to be brave too, because he's angry because he was afraid. And you see that he was guilty for a long time and Lubici inspires everybody because he wants to make the world a more beautiful place. And that's a, an incredible, incredible thing. And that all comes through in your voice work. Thank you. You did yeah. amazing too. You were, I thought you were actually my mom. Oh, thanks, babe. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> you don't have to turn it back on me. You did beautiful work and you need to own it. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. I think that was my last one. So I'd just love to thank you, Misty, and you, Antonio, for chatting with me about Poopal of Chimney Town. You're awesome. Oh, you're awesome. You're an amazing person. Yeah. Yeah. And you sound fine. Compliments everywhere. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome and loved here for sure. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. I thank you very much. And I hope you guys both enjoy the rest of your interviews. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much.